stop understanding. What's up, YouTube? This is Dark Styles video here, and I figured since it is the new year and 2013 was a great year for gaming, I might as well do my top 10 list of games for 2013. Now I will tell you ahead of time, I have rated these games on this list specifically based on fun, graphics, storytelling, which is huge with a lot of these games on this list, and also presentation, which also coincides with graphics as well, and music. And no, I'm not talking about music games like Dance Central, I'm just talking about how music can really set the tone for certain scenes in video games. So with that said, let's get started with the list. Now number 10, uh, this game honestly made me smile and laugh from beginning to end. And it was Deadpool. Now I had a hard time deciding either to have Deadpool or DMC Devil May Cry as number 10, but overall I had way more enjoyment with Deadpool. The graphics were great. The voice acting was phenomenal. I, I loved the voice acting in this game, it was great. Now, the gameplay was fun. I liked some of the game mechanics, like how Deadpool literally cannot die. Like even when you do get a game over, Deadpool is right there telling you how much you sucked. <laughs> um, the Other than that, the reason why it's so low on the top 10 is mainly because a lot of the fighting did feel repetitive. I'm sorry Deadpool, it did. I'm, I'll give you a chimichanga to, you know, make up for it, <laughs> but some of the fighting did, you know, did feel repetitive, which is why I was so low on the top 10, but still, you guys love games based off of your favorite comic book heroes. You should definitely pick up Deadpool. Now, number nine on this list, technically I combined two games in one, but that's only because technically they're both the same game, just one is an, up, an update, which should have remained just an update, not a $40 price tag, but this game is, it's a long name, Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm 3, and the updated version is Full Burst. This game I love, but had issues with at the same time, but still it deserves its its spot. It has so many great characters from Naruto Shippuden, the animation and manga. The story mode was great. They finally brought back the fact that you can run around the whole village and run around to other places as well, which people loved that. The boss battles were great. I had so much fun with the boss battles. They actually updated the graphics and the presentation from the original to Full Burst. And they even added some more scenes as well. And in Full Burst, they added an extra boss battle and one new character, which honestly, after all of the flack that we gave CC2, CyberConnect2, and Namco Bandai that made the game, about how they should have had the Edo Kage and the Seven Swordsman as playable characters, they only give us one extra one. That's the main reason why it's so low on the list. I truly feel that they really should have given gamers what they've been wanting ever since they announced the game was even going to be in development. I'm sorry, Naruto, but that's kind of how it is. The gamers have kind of spoken on that one. Hopefully they fix that and give us actual characters we want and not pre-time skip characters when they release Revolution. Now, number eight on this list is a game that honestly I did not think I was going to enjoy that much as I did. And it was Corpse Party Book of Shadows. Now this game does look and feel dated mainly because it is, but at the same time it is the story of it is so great. I love the voice acting in this game. Even though a lot of it is Japanese voice acting and English subtitles, I don't care. It was still great. Now, the story in of itself is 
a great horror story and I love horror games, horror anime. Probably my favorite genre of anime out there is horror anime. And playing this game completely brought me back to how I felt when watching anime like Hell Girl or Higurashi. It brought me back to that feeling. And even though the, the graphics are dated, and it does show even on the PSP, it doesn't bother me that bad. Now, the reason why it's only at number 8 is because I feel that when they brought it to the PSP, they should have utilized the graphic power that the PSP has. And I know the PSP does have some impressive graphic power. I mean, look at Crisis Core. That game does have some great graphics in it. I, that's why I feel that they should have improved more on the graphic power of this game. But other than that, this game is a must have if you have a PSP. Even if you have a Vita, it's a must download if you have the Vita. Trust me, you will not go wrong with this game. Now number 7 is an, another RPG that I recently picked up and I actually did an unboxing video of it. And I've been playing it for quite a bit now and I thoroughly enjoy it. And it is East Memories of Celseta. I love the battle system of this game. It is basically uh, just run around hack and slash almost. But you have certain skills that you can use that when you use the skills it so reminds me of the Tales of series when you use your arts. But in here, it's it's not... It's, it's a little bit different than that. You don't have to encounter a battle and then you transition from how you were into a battle sequence. The battle is right there when you're in the dungeon. The voice acting is great in this, but there's a lot of times where they run into what I like to call partial voice acting. That's when you see a line of dialogue and the person that's supposed to say that dialogue only says, hey, or what's up, or what's that. When that's only a small, like the first two words of it, and then you see everything else they're supposed to be saying. That does annoy me a bit. Like, I, I know it costs a lot more money for having the voice actors to voice every word like they do in the Persona series, but I kind of wish they did have that, and that's why it got bumped down to 7. But still, the touch screen mechanics is perfect. I love the touch screen mechanics so much in this game. Um, it even has the touch screen mechanic for the rear touchpad as well, which is actually nice. And it works perfectly exactly how it's supposed to. I've never had an issue with it. Um, the graphics were amazing. I actually do thoroughly enjoy the music in the game as well. And the story is great. Honestly, the only negative thing I have to say about it is the voice acting. That's really it. So honestly, if you're looking for a great RPG for your Vita, East Memory of Celseta is definitely a good buy for you. Now, number six. This is a game that I saw so much hype for this game from a lot of my friends at this anime club that I go to every week. And honestly, I thought, you know what, it's probably just going to be so much hype that when I actually try it out, it's probably not going to live up to it. And man, I was so wrong. It is Fire Emblem Awakening. Oh my gosh. The graphics of this on the 3DS when it comes to cinematic effects is amazing. I did not think that the graphics would be so good in that. Especially when you get the 3D turned on, the 3D really pops in the cinematic effects. I'm actually really happy that they finally brought in the fact you can make your own character. And your character has a legit story along with the main scenario. The only issue, well, there's a few issues, but my major gripe for the game is I love the graphics and the art style of the cinematic effects and everything else, 
but who in the world had the idea to make every character's legs look like they had no feet? I don't know. For some reason, every character looks like they have no feet. It, it just goes leg straight to ground. That's one of my gripes. The other small complaint, which really isn't that much of a complaint, I mean it is a strategy RPG. The battle, the way you fight in the game, it's not... It, it is evolved from what it used to be. They did evolve it slightly, but only slightly. I wish that they could have, I don't know, evolved it a little bit more than it used to be in some of the previous ones. Like, maybe something like how Project Cross Zone did. Project Cross Zone is another strategy RPG, but the battle system is a little bit more fresh compared to what Fire Emblem did. But still, they did add in some new features, which I thoroughly enjoy. So if you're looking for a great strategy game, or just a great RPG in general for your 3DS, please pick this game up. You will be doing yourself a disservice if you do not get this game.